It's a question about um, competition in Europe. You have been arguing for several regulations to increase the possibilities within the, um, the European Union for better um, competitions. Where, is the high, where was, in your opinion, the highlight of your report? Well, the highlight, I think, is the uh, now new topics which have been uh, drawn into the competition policies from the, from the Parliament here. There have been the ever-ongoing stories, of course, it's of Google. It's an annual and so report. On. It's an annual report, yes, a returning issue. And, uh, and things that have been important for me, of course, are issues that were in the, in the campaign just last year when we, when we had the elections. For instance, the issues with social dumping, which are now becoming extremely uh, relevant with Ryanair acting as they are and other uh, cheap flight companies. Um, with the use of structural funds, uh, where companies can receive the funds and then outsource their, their, their production. Um, capital within transport and other issues I think are relevant and important to include in such a report. And that's new and that's sort of my, my fingerprints, you could say. I noticed you are fighting for small and medium enterprises um, possibilities to gain loans to be able to be competitive on the market. What's yes. the chances? What the chances are, well, hopefully they'll be better because right now uh, we are in this barrack situation that it's uh, never been cheaper to borrow money. Yet, on the other hand, still some companies lack the, uh, the fiscal facilities to, 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 to renovate or to, to, to develop whatever they want. So we need to get out of this uh, deadlock. And uh, there's no doubt that the SMEs uh, are the backbone of the European uh, industry and thereby of the European uh, economy. Um, so that needs to have the major uh, focus, I think, in a report like this. Like this, not forgetting, of course, that the competition policy needs to have a horizontal approach. It's, as I said in my speech when I introduced the report, presented it, um, it's like the, uh, the, the, the traffic regulation of the inner market. We have, need to have a level playing field for everybody, all operators there, in order to have the inner market work well. But if they have to survive or if they can't survive, they need some kind of uh, financial support. Isn't there a danger that the, um, the state has to go in and support them um indirectly or directly and thereby violating the rules. Now that's exactly what we've seen during the financial crisis and we're actually calling for now a final end for the, for instance, national subsidies on the banking sector and the final sector. That must end because it certainly uh, created imbalances in the market that are damaging to the to the free free trade and free competition. So we're calling for the stop of that, but a horizontal and even approach rising capital for other uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, bigger ones or whatever, who are, who are needed in, in, in order to create jobs because we are so uh, evidently uh, in the need of that. It's ironical if you see in the world right now, if you look on the global economy, uh, the growth in, 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 in globally is bigger than in Europe. If you look on Europe, the, the, the growth is bigger than in the EU. And if you see in the EU and compared to the Eurozone, well, the growth there is bigger as well. So the closer you get to the Eurozone, the, the less growth you have. So there are evident problems within the Eurozone and the EU that need to be tackled. You are looking upon the dangers of cartels um, where they might be very difficult to control. And it's an ongoing process. Probably yeah. we haven't seen uh, the top yet. What are the chances to have an efficient control? Well, it's, it's, this is not a question where we can be weak. Cartels is violating the very basic a criteria of a free market economy if uh, two companies or more that, that seem to be competing actually make arrangements on their prices, for instance. That's, that's basically setting the free market out of power, and that's unacceptable. So what we call for in the report is that within the Commission, where we know that there are unspent resources, that needs to be allocated within the DG commun the, the, the competition portfolio, by the way, with the Danish Commissioner, Margrethe Vestager, who's been a great uh, uh, person to work along with on this, uh, on this report. So I think this is also, not exclusively, but also a resource issue. Um, many want to have new money then within the Commission to, to, to tackle this. What we suggested and compromise we, we ended up with is that within the Commission the unused res resources should be uh, located for this. Could you point out areas where the uh, average citizen can feel that you're doing 
their job, so to speak, on their behalf. Well, the funny thing is that there is almost no area where you can't feel this, because if you don't have the free market, if you don't have the free competition, uh, consumer prices will rise and the, uh, and the amount of jobs in Europe will, will diminish. So um, this is something that really impacts everybody in their everyday life. Then, for the past 10 years, we've seen the backside or the, the, the other side of the coin of the free, of the free uh, market, namely in social dumping and all these issues I mentioned before. Therefore, that now needs to be tackled as well as a part of the competition policy. But basically, uh, the, the, the cheap flight tickets you can buy nowadays, the uh, for, well, hopefully soon abolished roaming tar, uh, uh, charges and so on, is all due to the competition policies because we want people, and we want organizations, company to be competing on a fair platform on the quality of the product. And that's exactly what's stated out in my report. Is it, um, is it the job of the EU to uh, have legislation on all these matters. What about the national state's responsibilities? I think it's a, it's a shared responsibility. Obviously, uh, when it comes to the, uh, say, regulation of the highways, we need in an inner market, if you accept the, the premise of being in an inner market, then we need to have common regulation on that. For instance, on, on regulation and fusions between companies or cartels, as you mentioned it, it wouldn't make sense if the member states had individual regulations on that. On the other hand, there are plenty of issues which are crucial to the, to the, to the inner market and the, and the uh, circumstances for the production, uh, say the uh, environmental standards, the social legislation, things like that, that I believe are entirely up to the member states to deal with on a national level. So this is an in-between where we need to be very uh, prudent in, in distinguishing so that we don't mix it up. These institutions have a tendency of, of wanting to regulate as much as ever possible. So I see myself and my group, the ECR group, as one of the defenders to, to turn back parts of the serenity to the member states as well.